I'm looking for some new music, so I want you all to mail in to at three with me at gmail.com and send me your bumble beat. And you just never know, it might be played. But um, I think I got introduced to this one by my sister, Regina Bynum. I want to give a shout out to her, great intercessor. Um, she gave me this and told me about this girl. Uh, it's Rain from the album Refresh. So I would um, suggest that you would go and get uh, this particular CD and download it. I'm telling you, it's amazing. Um, I always say that the biggest compliment that I can ever give anybody about their music is when I choose to play it during my time of prayer. And um, so, Sister Rain, I don't know you. I've never met you. But I think you have an amazing, amazing project. It's called Refresh. And my sister... Um, Y'all need to give her some ties, because when I tell you she sells, y'all, um, she said to me, you know, Nita, do you not know that they only rehearsed one song the night of their live recording? Um, they rehearsed one song, and an entire uh, uh, CD was birthed out of one song. They got on the stage and started singing one song, and every song that you hear on here, besides the one song that they rehearsed, is all prophetic songs that God downloaded on the spot. The one that you hear me playing about the altar, that's on that project as well. And so she's our bumblebee for right now. And um, the altar and um, the good shepherd is just, you know, I don't, I want you all to know that I don't just play um, music when I get ready to go, come on here and I say, you know, what I'm gonna play, play today, I don't do it that way. Um, if I play something, it's because it's been in my spirit for days. And uh, my housekeeper can tell you, my assistant can tell you, I have that. I have not turned this song off and the song about the altar probably in about three weeks. So it plays consistently in my house um, over here at Three With Me. So in this spot right here, you can hear it all downstairs. You can hear it downstairs and upstairs um, because when I go off here, I turn it on 10. And, um, yeah, we, they be yelling to tell me stuff. Do you want from the grocery store? You know, I can't hear you. I said, talk louder. Talk louder because I can't turn this down. But um, I want to commend them for a project well done. It's a very powerful project. And um, the song just says, cast all your cares on him. Because like a good shepherd, he would always be there to supply your every need. He's there and he's listening. And all you have to do is talk to him talk to him. Okay, 
So we're getting ready to get started, and, and some of you, um, I notice you have ordered your Bibles, and uh, um, I, I always try to be as sensitive as I possibly can when it comes down to um, the purchasing of material that I know would change your life, and I would never offer you anything that I didn't think would change your life and something that has not changed mine. So as we are go getting ready to go into today's lesson, and I don't know about you, but yesterday's lesson was absolutely incredible, and um, you need to share it. And uh, I'm telling you, it's it's um, what God is doing is just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And so we, we are making an extension on the topical signature Bible. We've only added 200 more, and that will be it for real. Um, that would be it for real. Mr. Mir uh, is probably shaking in his boots right now. But um, great people over there that prints my books and um, got 200 more going to press for somebody who still wanted one. And I've had several people to call and tell me that, you know, I'm ordering 12 books. Uh, both of them said I'm ordering 12. Somebody else said, Marguerite said I'm ordering 10. I'm ordering for one for all my family. And she appreciated me for giving her an opportunity to get the topical Bible. So they would make great Christmas gifts and one that would become valuable one day when I'm going on to be with the Lord. Y'all going to be talking about, I got that Bible. Mm -hmm. That's how it work. That's how it work. You think futuristically um, because that's my goal to see my Jesus. And uh, also we're in this book. Uh, praying for the third dimension, and we are in the second chapter. And some incredible things have happened um, yesterday as I began to talk about um, where we were sitting as it relates to the peace. And when I have the peace, I do have the whole. I already have the whole by just having a peace. I already have the whole. And that was a revelation within itself. I don't know about y'all, but I kind of felt like it was a revelation. Um, talking about that apple and, 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 and that thing really, really, I mean, God just brought that out. You know, that wasn't a pre-thought. It was something that he just gave me on the spot. And um, I just went for it. Um, and with that in mind, with that in mind, um, the next part of this, today's lesson, tag somebody and share this with someone and um I'm going to show you uh, before we go off how to invite your friends to like the page because some of you probably kind of confused about it. So on this page, you go to the like page, which, which you're on this page, and you scroll down to where it says community, where it says community on my page, and you click see all. When you click see all, um, and it'll say invite your friends to Dr. Juan, to like Dr. Juanita Bynum's page. And you're going to see all of your friends listed. And all you do is start clicking the invite, invite, invite until you're finished. That's right. So that's how you do it. You go to, you come to this page. And when we go off, you scroll down till you see the section that says community. On the bottom of community, it says see all. You hit see all. And it'll say, invite your friends to like Juanita Bynum's page. And all of the invite boxes will go down the side and you just start hitting those boxes. And that's how you can invite your friends to like the page so we can reach our one million um, mark. And I'm telling you, if, if, if um, we have 270 something followers on this page that like the page already, and if you all just invited everybody and if 10 people responded, we would be more than at our one million mark. I'm telling you, I'm working on something for at three with me. And it's big and it's juicy and it's great. And um, the only way that I can get it done is with your help. Um, I cannot do what I need to do on this side to the people that I'm talking to unless you help me. And so I don't ask for help often. And I'm not one of those people that call, ask you to pay for a prophecy or, you know, sow a seed into my ministry, you know, and if you do, you go a roundabout way of doing so. Cause even when many of you post and say, how do I sow a seed? You notice I never answer you because that's not why I'm sitting here. I'm not sitting here for you to uh, sow seeds. If that's what you want to do, then my ministry number is there and you go for it. But I want this church, this church, uh, this community to be a place where you can come and um, freely receive it, you know, because I've been freely given it. And um, that's where I'm sitting at on this page. So if somebody's waiting, you know, a hater is waiting for me to say, oh, I just sent somebody all to sow $500. Uh, you, you won't see that here. You won't see that here. 
because I, I believe that the greatest seed that can be sold is your life into the kingdom of God and your life into the kingdom of God in a proper manner. And to me, that seed is worth a billion dollars because you are helping to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and we are causing people to come into the plan of salvation. So that's it. That's it. That, 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 there you have it. So when I ask you to help me, that's, that's about as far as it's going to go. Um, but I, I'm talking to some major people about at three with me. And uh, the only way that I can uh, get done what I want to get done, but from the level that I want to get it done, I need to show a million followers. And so that's how you do it. Once again, when this program goes off, just scroll down to where it says community. And underneath the community, you will see in the gray letters, see all. When you hit see all, you're going, to, you're going to be looking right at your friends. And it's going to say, invite your friends to like Juanita Biden's page. And you just go down the line, inviting everybody until you are finished. Some of you may have 100 to do, may have 500 to do. Um, just keep on inviting, inviting, inviting until you're done. And that's how you invite people to like the page. So now that we have that out of the way, when I look at... Um, that doorknob, and I look at the example of the kingdom of God and, 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 and coming out. Remember, this is just um, a doorknob into a place of spiritual stability. And then another doorknob into the realm of the spirit. A different realm, the third dimension realm. In order to... Um, get that done. Um, Pastor Bayas, I am on at three with me, and that tells me you don't watch it, sir. I'm live right now. Uh, I'm talking uh, to you. Uh, sorry, I just, I God just, bless you. I, I, just <laughs> I will. I will talk to you later. Bye bye. <laughs> Call me when you get back. <laughs> that's Pastor Bayas. That's going to be at the um, conference, and he doesn't even doubt me like that. So I answered because that you know it was an emergency. He just landed from out of the country. Um, uh, we're going to Philadelphia. Bring back the glory. It's going to be in Philadelphia, the 5th through the 8th. I'm excited. You who? Um, but as I begin to look at this, this door uh, possibility and the whole concept of this door um, and opening that knob and that the temptation is not unto, um, it's not unto uh, just a feeling or an act but it's an invitation to another dimension. And so when I realized that it was a temptation to another dimension, then the Lord began to deal with me about where we are in this book, in the second chapter, and it's talking about um, the outer court and approaching the altar. And so then I had to start thinking about the fact that, and, and this was a, a revelation that, that really hit me, I had to start thinking about where the church is as it relates to the altar, to the altar. And so the questions began to flurry out of me and I wrote some of them down. Um, I wrote some of them down and some of them were um, questions like, um, um, were statements, uh, the wrong altar, the neglected altar. Um, but when I thought about it, the question hit me, are we on the right altar to get the right results? And who has altered the altar? If we're not on the right altar to get the proper results, then who has altered the altar? This is something. This is something. I want you to see this. Who has altered the altar? So in order to do that, you have to then go back and look at um, the definition of what an altar is. And um, that was uh, somewhat surprising because I know that um, we are called to the altar and we are, uh, 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 you know, there's no other way to enter in. So I had to look up what was an altar. An altar was a place where things are rearranged. An altar is a place where things are rearranged. 
The altar is a place. Watch this. I want you to I want you to really, 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 really see this. The altar is a place where things are changed. And the altar is a place where change or it causes a change. It causes a change. But it's also a place that causes a change, not just a change, but a change in character. In character or in composition. So when I am called to an altar, I am called to a place of change. Somebody said, well, what does that have to do with yesterday? I'm going to show you how. I'm going to show you why. This has plenty to do with yesterday. It said that when you go to the altar, and we're looking at uh, uh, Genesis, the 29th chapter, and for lack of a better time, when Jacob went and he was running, doing all of his stuff, and the Bible said he laid down and he went to sleep. So the altar is what changes you. He laid down, he went to sleep, and he saw the angels ascending and descending. And he had a visitation from God. And on this altar, and please hear this, on this particular altar, at this particular time, the altar is not necessarily a constructed place. It is not necessarily um, brick and mortar. But you can build an altar with brick and mortar as a representation of what sits in you. And I think the reason why some people are not changed is because they don't have an altar. There's nothing about them that says, I have an altar. And so if you don't have an altar inwardly, you can't properly represent one outwardly. And so maybe that's what's wrong with a lot of places, a lot of churches, why people are not getting saved and people are not getting changed. Because an altar inwardly is needed as a proper representation of an altar outwardly. So when somebody said, come to the altar, they're not asking you to come to some steps. They're asking you to come to that place in your life where you are desiring change from God. And on this page today, if you are listening and you don't know the Lord as your personal savior, I want you to hear this because I feel like I'm ministering to somebody like that today. Even though I'm ministering to all of us. So then we have to determine then what, what we are supposed to do when we are approached and confronted with the acknowledgement of do I have an altar or do I not have one? And that's the reason why I believe that people can be changed anywhere. I don't, I don't necessarily believe that you have to, you have to. Even though the Bible said forget not to assemble yourself, I don't believe that you have to be in a church in order to get somebody saved. I don't believe that you have to be sitting between the pews and hearing the praise and worship, you know, singer sing. All of those are, are amenities that's added to the moment. But the true moment is when I realize that I have an altar and I'm being called to one. And I never, ever paid attention to that altar before until now. So that must mean God himself is desiring to have a relationship with me because now I'm being prompted to take notice of my altar within. Am I teaching something right now? Am I teaching something right now? And so here we are. I, I'm going, this is going to be great. I, I just want you to hold on now because I got I to gotta, I gotta really, really plow through this. So the scripture is telling us that he meets a place of the altar. And when he gets to uh, the place of this altar, hold on a second. Um, turn that off. When he gets to the place of this altar, they were saying the volume is going in and out and I don't know why. Let me just take this out. Okay. When we get to the place of this altar, is that better now? Is that better? Somebody said the, of the volume was going in and out. When we get to the place of this altar, um, God prophesies to him. And this is the part that I want you to see from yesterday. This is the connective to yesterday. He prophesies to him. And if you look at it, people of God, 
He prophesied to him and he didn't, he didn't deserve that kind of prophecy. Not that kind of prophecy. And that scripture being confirmed. That scripture being confirmed. And the Lord allows him to fall into a sleep. And he dreams and sees angels ascending and descending. It's glorious. The moment is glorious. And so he gets up and he says, oh my God, you know, the Lord really spoke to me in this place. God himself spoke to me. And he prophesies and tells him all that he's going to do for him. Everything that he's going to do for him. And so now he has to go. And he's going encouraged. He's going encouraged knowing that God definitely has his hands on his life. But I want you to see something. I want you to see something that's, that, that, that's tricky that uh, most of us are not really recognizing. When you get to Genesis, the 31st chapter, Genesis, the third, now the 29th chapter, he prophesies to him. When you get to Genesis, the 31st chapter, and you look at the scripture, he starts talking to him um, about the fact that now I want you to go back to the same place. He takes him back to the same place where he built his first altar before God. And that's the altar of prophecy. Your first place is the altar, altar of prophecy. It's when the Lord approaches you and tell you what he desires out of you. That's not the place of correction. That's not the place of establishment. That's the place where God speaks and alter the direction that your life is going in. Is somebody getting that? That's when God alters. The prophecy comes to alter. That's why you shouldn't let nobody give you no jelly back prophecy. Oh, I just see the Lord going to bless you. Come with something better than that. Because I, I already know that God going to bless me. Now, I'm going in this direction. Now, when the prophecy comes and the true word of the Lord comes, it comes so that I can be turned in another direction. Or I can have confidence about the direction that I'm going in. And so that is the altar of direction. That is the altar of comfort. But then the Lord calls him back to that same altar. Somebody else just said I'm going in and out. Somebody else just said I'm going in and out. Is somebody else seeing that I'm going in and out? If one of my workers can come, I could stop this video and re reboot it. Because I don't want us to keep going in and out. Um, I just want to make sure that we're, we're straight. Can somebody come from up from downstairs and tell me whether or not you can hear me properly? Because um, I know the enemy don't want this word to go forth. He don't like this. He don't like this. He don't like this one. Because this one right here is no joke. This one right here is no joke. <clears throat> I'm waiting for somebody to come from. Yeah, they said it's going in and out. So I'm going to have to reboot this video. I don't know why. But everything, I do know why, because the devil don't like this. But y'all just hold on, hold on. I'm going to give us our full time, I promise. <laughs>